God be with you. Welcome to our worship at Faith Lutheran Church in Kelowna, BC. Today is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. And for our students and teachers who have started the school year, we hope you have a good school year. We begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Our first hymn today is Lift High the Cross. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain trod, a king victorious, Christ the Son of God. Lift by the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing together our Kyrie. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. 
For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day that we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie every day for peace in our hearts for peace in our homes for friends and family for life and for love for our work and our play let us pray to the Lord let us pray to the Lord Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 to 33. In these verses, wisdom is personified as a woman who invites all who will listen to follow her. Though wisdom offers her hand to those who scoff at her, they spurn all such counsel. That they come to ruin is predictable. Those who find wisdom, however, find life. Here begins the reading. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, would you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and ang anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof, Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, 
and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no voices, are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. When, where God has pitched a tent for the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the othermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, much more than fine gold, sweeter far than, than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then I shall be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We sing together our gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with the disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you from the God who created us, the one who suffered to redeem us, and the one who sustains us day by day. Amen. The cross is the central symbol of the Christian faith. If you come across a building that has a cross on it, chances are pretty good that it's a church. Look at a map and most often churches are identified with a cross. Walk inside any Christian church and you are likely to see crosses on walls and in prominent locations everywhere. Our own church has a large wooden cross on the wall behind the altar, 
and a smaller brass one on the altar. If you, you can spot our church from a distance because of the cross that's on the steeple. Crosses and Christian churches are pretty much synonymous. A friend of mine once told me that the Crystal Cathedral, the large megachurch in Garden Grove, California, whose pastor for many years was Robert Schuller, and was one of the very first churches to broadcast its services on television to millions of viewers in multiple countries, has no crosses in it. If there are any crosses, they are not very prominent. I don't know if that's entirely accurate, but I have a hard time finding any in the photos that I have seen of that church, especially in the front of the church. That would have been the focus for its television broadcasts. That may seem strange at first, but it begins to make a little more sense when one, when one realizes that Robert Schuller was a big fan of the best-selling book, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Peale was a minister in the Reformed Church in America, as was Robert Schuller. Schuller attempted to integrate Peale's teachings on positive thinking with the theology of John Calvin, the founder of the Reformed Church movement. As such, Schuller avoided those parts of the Christian tradition that he considered to be negative in nature. The cross was one of those things. The cross is essentially an instrument of death and torture. Schuller saw it entirely as a symbol of suffering and pain and death. Wanting to avoid such negative associations, crosses were not to be displayed prominently. Traditionally, churches were built in the shape of a cross, especially years ago in the era when many large stone churches and cathedrals that are still standing today were constructed. But the Crystal Cathedral is built in the shape of a star. It has lots of glass and windows, which on a sunny day makes it shine like a star in the night sky. I guess stars are a more positive symbol than crosses. So crosses and death and darkness are out, and stars and light and life are in. Obviously, that message resonated with many people because in addition to his immensely popular Hour of Power television broadcasts, Robert Schuller wrote over 30 books, six of which made it on the New York Times bestseller list. Interestingly, about a decade ago, nearly four years prior to Robert Schuller's death, the board of directors of the church sought bankruptcy protection, and the Crystal Cathedral was eventually sold to the Roman Catholic Diocese of Orange County. It was renamed Christ Cathedral. And I'm sure there is no lack of crosses in that building now, not to mention the number of crucifixes. But the phenomenon that the cross has negative connotations and that it is to be avoided is an interesting one. In a way, it flies in the face of our reading from St. Mark's Gospel today where Jesus holds up the cross as something to be embraced and says, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. These words, of course, follow quickly on the heels of the first of three times that Jesus will speak so pointedly about his death, how he will suffer, be rejected, be killed, and then die, and three days later, rise again. This first passion prediction follows immediately after Peter's great confession that Jesus is the Messiah. That order of events is not random. It's very intentional. The author is making a point that there is a connection between cross an empty tomb between Jesus suffering and dying and Jesus rising to new life, between death and life. In fact, the point may be even stronger than that. Suffering and death are not negatives to be avoided at all costs. They are a part of life, whether we like it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not. And they do not have the final word. They can 
and they do lead to life. One might even go so far as to say that there is no life without suffering and death, that there, the two are inseparably linked. For those who are all about positive thinking, that kind of attitude is counterintuitive. A positive thinking attitude, like Norman Vincent Peale and Robert Schuller promote, avoids negativity at all costs. It tries to recast negatives as positives. But some things can't be written off by simply saying that when life gives you lemon, lemons make lemonade. Life is much more complex than that. What Jesus is talking about here goes, goes much deeper. This is about identity. This is about who Jesus really is. Jesus can suffer and be the Messiah, the one who saves at the same time. The two are not mutually exclusive. Death does not signal defeat. What Jesus says here in the eighth chapter of Mark's gospel has been labeled a theology of the cross. A theology of the cross states that God often works through weakness, even suffering, shame, and death. Those things are not devoid of God. They may even be where we see God most clearly revealed. The opposite of a theology of the cross is a theology of glory that states that God works only through things that are powerful. When Peter hears Jesus' first passion prediction and takes him aside to reprimand him, Peter is operating with a theology of glory. Jesus, in turn, reprimands Peter for thinking this way and sets him straight with a quick lesson in theology of the cross. Peter can't imagine a world where the Messiah is not strong and powerful. And Jesus tells him that God can't imagine a world where the Messiah doesn't suffer. We know that this world is not the way it's supposed to be. We know that this world is not the Eden that God may have originally had in mind. But instead of abandoning the world and everyone and everything in it, God decides to work with it and to redeem it. Suffering, pain, tragedy, shame, even death is a part of life. Nobody escapes it. Everybody is touched by it. Some, some more than others. God does not abandon us in those times. On the contrary, God may even be more present to us then than at other times. Or at least we may be more aware of God's presence at those times. A theology of the cross keeps the cross and all it represents central. Keeps it our focus. It says God is in our suffering and works with suffering and through suffering to bring life. Therefore, it is not to be avoided, but embraced, for that is where God embraces us. And if that is who Jesus is, the one who suffers, and that in that suffering finds life, then we as disciples are to be the same. If any want to become my followers, says Jesus, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. To follow Jesus is to carry a cross. To follow Jesus is to recognize the reality of suffering and not minimize it, but carry it. That's not simply about putting up with bad things. It's about dying to ourself, our selfishness and our entitlement and serving others. Now, now here's a curious thing. I said earlier that cr the cross is the central symbol of the Christian faith and that crosses are often a symbol for churches. But there are other buildings that often have crosses on them and that are sometimes represented symbolically by a cross. Hospitals. Sometimes on a map, hospitals can be identified by a cross, although that was much more a thing of years past. Many hospitals were started by churches and parachurch organizations, and therefore it might make sense that they would be identified by a cross. The International Red Cross, an organization whose founder was a person of faith and who was inspired by the Christian teachings on uh, social responsibility, is another well-known 
paramedical organization represented by a cross. I find it curious that places of healing and medical assistance are identified by a cross. Their take on the cross has a different nuance to it. Hospitals are places where pain and suffering are not avoided, but acknowledged and addressed, maybe even embraced in the hopes of bringing healing and restoring life and vitality. Pain, suffering, tragedy, and disease are common occurrences in hospitals, but it doesn't stop the people who work there from pursuing health and wholeness. In fact, the two, death and life, are often side by side in a hospital. To follow Jesus is to carry a cross. That's not a negative thing, that's a positive thing. Does following Jesus mean that we will live a life of ease and leisure? No. Will it mean that no harm or tragedy will ever befall us? No. Will it mean that all things negative will pass us by? No. But that's not life in this world anyway. We know how difficult life can be. Don't get me wrong. To think positive and look on the bright side of things is a very good thing. I mean, I try to be as positive and upbeat a person as I can be. But that, 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 but that does not mean I deny the presence of suffering and tragedy or assume that those things are somehow God's judgment on the world. Ours is a theology of the cross. We believe that God often works through weakness, even suffering, shame, and death. We could even say that God's most profound work and presence is in and through suffering and death. For it is in our suffering that God meets us at our most vulnerable, our most fragile, our most impoverished. And God has a special love and concern for the vulnerable, the fragile, the impoverished, for the last, the least, the lost, and the little. We are no closer to God than when God comes close to us, takes on our human form, lives, suffers, and dies as one of us. In the process, God breaks the stranglehold that suffering, sin, and death has on us. For Jesus, suffering may lead to death, but after three days, death leads to life. This is the promise of the cross. And that is the hope that drives us as followers of Jesus to be servants of one another. That may be a heavy cross to carry, but it is one that will save our life. Amen. Go now by the power of the Holy Spirit to be the church and mission to do the will of God in the world. Amen. We continue as we sing our next hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? Come and follow me if I but call your name. Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? see if I but call your name. Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean?
Will you love the you you hide if I would call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch and sound in you. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the People Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the Church, the world, and all in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church that is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet to the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forming God, you gather this community together shape our communal life, that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin 
against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn today is Go My Children With My Blessing. My children with my blessing never alone waking sleeping I am with you you are my own in my love's baptismal river I have made you mine forever go my children with my blessing you my own. Go, my children, sins forgiven at peace and pure. Here you learned how much I love you, what I can cure. Here you heard my dear son's story, here you touched him, saw his glory. Go, my children, sins forgiven at peace and pure. Go, my children, fed and nourished closer to me. Grow in love and love by serving, joyful and free. Hear my spirit's power fill you, hear my tender comfort still you. Go, my children, fed and nourished, joyful and free. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.